<laughs> Juicy. <laughs> Juicy. All right, Fab Tech 2019. I'm uh, going in. This is day one. I'm going to try to show some brief clips. My goal here is if you have never been to a Fab Tech, to make you want to go to one. So next year in 2020, it's in Vegas. Hope to see you there. Let's go in. CK Worldwide always does a great job on their booth. They've got this really cool display with a torch for just about every application you could imagine. This young lady's checking out their flexible purge chamber, and it was great to see so many young ladies walking the show floor this year. Blueco makes precision fixturing tables, precision tooling for fixturing for robotic applications, as well as just manual fabrication. It's super precision. Definitely not the kind of table you'd just want to turn a helper loose on. But if you need this kind of thing, check it out. Blueco. Flange Wizard makes really innovative stuff for pipe layout. Magnetic center finders, precision torpedo levels, all kinds of marking tools. And the founder was a pipe fitter himself. So he shifted gears from pipe fitting into manufacturing these type of tools to make a pipe fitter's job easier. Good stuff. You can see coming around this flange here, some two hole pins and things like that. Diamond Ground Products specializes in bench top electrode grinders, uh, diamond wheels. They sell electrodes. In fact, they even sell pre-sharpened electrodes. By the 3M booth for a minute, I want to say thanks to 3M for sponsoring the episodes of our Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. Also wanted to check out this really cool latest and greatest speed glass cartridge where you can even change color. Speed glass was the very first auto darkening helmet that I bought with my own money. And it was actually the only good one back then. This is a pretty good one. Being able to lift up to grind. Also got this little LED light down here for when it's kind of dark. Super handy. And if you'll see right here, it says Bluetooth enabled. I don't know all the details on that, but the man told me that you'll pretty soon be able to basically give commands to your lens to change color without touching anything. 3M has a really, really wide variety of products like respirators and abrasives, scotch Bright. We all use that stuff. Also stop by the Bugo booth and want to thank them for being a sponsor for the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. They have been for a good little while now. They make some really, really innovative stuff for automation. That's carrying a MIG gun situation here with wire feeder. On off. Oh, I didn't even, you know, I glossed right over that. And, and these are air operated. Have, yeah. You know, you'd have a magnet, you'd end up having arc well. Oh. Uh, well, now if you're using induction heating. Uh, see, I knew there was a reason why I went over there and got you. This is that same carriage with a MIG gun oscillator going on there. There's a turntable with a, a mount for a, for a TIG torch or a MIG gun or whatever. Quick release. Lots of stuff to improve production. That's what they're all about. Lincoln always has several engine drive units on the floor. This one's set up in the back of a, a truck bed there. I know a lot of guys are just drooling walking by those things. This is the Lincoln Top Tick Torch. Okay. So years ago with the cold wire feed tube being independent on a robotic torch, it was out here, independent, so you can bump it around, you can potentially have issues. But with the top take torch from Lincoln, you have an integrated cold wire feed tube. So that means you, you don't lose that risk of bumping that tube. What is it about being a welder that makes you absolutely have to inspect every weld you see? There it is. Back when I was fitting pipe, we used to just call one of these a Deerman clamp. But the company is Matthew Deerman. They make all kinds of other products too like these rotary torch cutters, hand crank ones, motorized ones for a torch or plasma. Of course, tools for beveling and facing. Lots of different companies here selling purge equipment, purge monitors, purge plugs, bladders, end caps, lots of different easier ways to purge pipe. One of the best things about Fabtech is being able to get a demonstration on a piece of equipment before you buy it. There's an ESOP guy running this booth giving demonstrations on it, but most of the time you can get behind the booth also and cut or weld if you want to. Weather kind of sucked while we were here, I'm not going to lie, but I was glad to hear that future fab techs in Chicago will be in September, not November. 
Day two, Fab Tech going in. We got uh, 3M Clash of the Grinders. Jimmy Duresta is going to be MC in that. I just heard that JD got a slot and uh, competing on that, so that'll be fun to watch. Lots of other stuff going on. I'll bring you along with me. Let's do it. Introduce yourself, Ryan. Uh, hi, I'm Ryan Fincher from Citytown, Georgia. I was the 2019 World Skills competitor for the U.S. What would you place again? I placed six in the world. I'm always blown away by these projects that the world, world skills guys have to do. They're timed. These things have to be welded in position. They can't rotate them around, and they still look awesome. Fabtech is also a great place to see positioners, welding lathes, turntables, pipe rollers, you name it. Stuff to make your job easier, more efficient. Here's another company that sells purge equipment. You can purge a little area like that a whole lot quicker than you hand 200 foot of pipe. And of course, there's a difference between no purge and a nice silver purge on stainless steel. At their website, interpurge.com, you'll also see weld-on hinges, as well as all kinds of other stuff. Another company that sells purge equipment is Aquasol. They have oxygen analyzers for verifying a purge. And they have this cool, this cool aluminum tape that doesn't have adhesive in the weld area, only out on the wings, out on the edge. So that's very useful if you ever try to use duct tape to close off a, a gap for a purge. You know, you, you can get gummy adhesive on the weld area, and this one's got an area right through the middle there, adhesive free. Let's go over and see what's going on on the Clash of Grinders contest. JD's going to be competing here in a minute. So we're up, we have a grinder down, grinder down, grinder down. All right! JD's down. The winner between 2018 and 2019 is... JD! Woo! I never doubted it. In fact, I knew he was going to win, and so did he. Check this out for a welding project. What a coffee table that would make. A Luma Reel always has a really cool setup. They had a couple of rigs set up. This one, I think, has a slide-out pallet for the whole, the whole thing there, the welder as well as all the spools. It's all about cable management, and they look cool, too. This rig is set up for pipe with this rollout wheel here. So cool. Get a look of the of the reels here now. So you got the stinger, the welding cable that is, and a ground, oxyacetylene, remote, and air. All nice, nice and neat. Digital inspection has gotten a lot more affordable. It used to be you had to sink 20 grand into a microscope to get something like this. This is something affordable for schools now. Arc Boss. This is primarily designed for pipe shops. Got a MIG gun holder with an oscillator on it. Lots of capability as far as positioning. Height is very easily set with a little oscillation on it. You got a video up here showing a, a pipe being welded with flux core. Pretty impressive. This outfit claims to have come up with a filler metal to weld 7075 aluminum without cracking or without problems like that using nanoparticles in the filler metal. I don't know. It's a new thing. If it's true, you'll be hearing about it soon. You can't hit it with your pliers, you can't find the right hole. Well, you add this swivel base to your foot, and now you can nail right on top of what you're after. Word on the street was Barbie was going to be hanging out at the Encompass booth. I had to stop by and get a great big hug and some inspiration. This is one of my favorite people on the planet. Such a great attitude, such a hard worker, just love her. Turns out Encompass has some pretty cool stuff, some automated TIG orbital stuff, twin spools with a big old Pyrex cup there, cool stuff. I heard they were giving pretty cool demos on this little torch that used to call it a hen rob. Uh, now it's called something else, but it, it's pretty popular amongst small aircraft builders, aviation, stuff like that. It's a pistol grip torch. We're going to walk down here and see if we can get a demo on it. Look familiar? This thing utilizes really low pressures, like 4 PSI on oxygen and acetylene for welding, a little higher on oxygen for cutting. This is a piece of aluminum right here. So the rod's got a little bit of flux on it. I'm going to gas weld this little sheet metal piece of aluminum. It's, I reckon around 040, something like that. Not very thick at all. I didn't catch the whole thing, but here's the end product. And the benefit in that is it really anneals 
the aluminum in the weld zone so you can uh, you know blend it off take it over to an English wheel and it's soft it won't crack also cuts cuts up to they say an inch this is just some pretty thin stuff here uh, really thin sheet metal look at the small kerf width on this thing it's almost like plasma I got a sample of this Walter excavator wheel I'll be testing that thing out and you'll see that on a video coming soon they got lots of good abrasive there I stopped to talk to so many people that I didn't see nearly the whole show, but that's okay. Kind of why I'm here is just to meet people, shake their hand, hear their story, make new friends, things like that. But this is really cool. It's a Unistrut cutter by Rigid. Pop. No bandsaw, crooked cuts, or, or a lot of burrs or anything. Hardly even leaves a burr. And another piece they have over here in the same booth for cutting angle iron. It's like an iron worker. It's like a hydraulic powered iron worker. It'll do round stock, it'll do angle iron. I mean, that's the only little deformation in it. Just a little. Of course, Rigid has plenty of other products. This uh, dry cut saw. And this is a, a hole saw. Looks really cool for clamping on pipe. If you have to put an OLED or some kind of fitting on pipe, it's made for that. And of course, you've seen this before. JD's got one of those. You know, there's one day that he beveled about 20 bevels in an hour with that thing. Amazing. Michigan Pneumatic Tool. I don't know much about them, but they had a really good setup here. Lots of different hand tools, air tools, uh, belt sanders like this, air scribers, kits with uh, belts and sanders in them, different heads on them. Lots of different air tools. Again, the great thing about a Fabtech is that you can see all this stuff at one time. You can put your hands on it. And speaking of that, ESOB does a really good job with their booth. They probably got more demonstrations, more interactive demonstrations where you can go actually weld with their equipment than any other booth in there. This is my really good friend, Sydney, with Georgia Trade School. She came to Fabtech to participate in a panel discussion on new welders applying for jobs and preparing resumes. And before Georgia Trade School, she hired for one of the biggest shipyards in the country. So she knows what she's talking about you've got certifications, make sure they're on your resume and listed. Um, another thing I say is email a copy of it to yourself. 100% do not send a Word document out to your employer. Save it as a PDF and email it to yourself. You can get jobs standing here talking to people. They want to see your resume. If it's in your email, you got to just forward it. This is JD and Patrick. Patrick is TIG Junkie on Instagram. Came all the way from Australia this year and last year. I had a really good visit at Arkansas Elite Welding Academy booth. Their philosophy is to make the welder as uncomfortable as possible while he's going through training so that he'll do better in the field. Because we all know when you get in the field, you get in some tight spots. They even have these training things set up for mirror welding and limited access welding. See this box? It's set up with mirrors so they can train welders to make mirror welds. Let me tell you, when you just go to welding school and you've never made a mirror weld and then all of a sudden you have to, you wish you got a little practice on it. In addition to mirror welds, they've got this little limited access trainer here. They call it the BOA restrictor. You can see it's hard to get in there. You've got to make lots of little short runs, lots of stops and starts, but that's real world stuff. Hey, I hope to see you next year at Fabtech 2020 in Vegas. Look me up. It's going to be a blast.